I see my role as the crash test dummy that has jumped in head first into every situation that I can possibly think of and either, you know, survived or not survived to tell the tale. I like a world that's covered in graffiti. Like, I like when everything is completely fucking covered in graffiti, which most people don't like. But to me, I'm like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Like, that's exactly the world I want to live in. No rules. <laughs> Do what you want, you know? My name is Elliot O'Donnell. My artist name is Askew One. I started painting graffiti in the early 90s, roughly around when I started high school, so 1993. Um, dabbling with it, um, back then it was more of a, a tagging scene, so I was more interested in just doing tags as I was traveling from one place to another with my friends, usually whilst drinking uh, and acting up generally. Um, and in about 94, late 94, early 95, a lot of my friends really shifted their focus into painting pieces and trying to get really good at that. And that sort of started an almost 20 year journey, which has sort of led me to this place where I am now living and working as an artist full time and traveling and doing heaps of cool stuff. When I was younger, my audience was very small in regards to who I cared about. I only cared about people from the graffiti scene seeing what I did. I trained myself into the mind frame where it was really about numbers and that I had to create a particular volume of work every year or I was completely failing as a human being. So if I did not paint between 100 and 200 like pieces, mostly illegally, during a year I felt like I had failed. And I was very, very hard on myself about it. And me and my friends tended to kind of count, keep count and compete. Graffiti, all of its power is really derived from its context of environment. So graffiti draws everything that makes it awesome from where it is, how it was applied, the attitude. And you don't have to make so much commentary per se. You don't have to research your graffiti. You don't have to come from a really solid kind of research viewpoint. You know, it's the act that's the powerful aspect to it. I used to paint a lot of graffiti and I used to give about 10% of my time to you know, making art and then never feel completely satisfied with the art and never really fully kind of create a situation of stability for myself either. So I had to just start tipping that ratio and now I see it more like as art is my job, it's where I put like 80% of my energies and then the other 20% of my art making time is just for going out and having a release and just painting something free for fun, socially with my friends, for an outlet, you know, the feel not really kind of enclosed. We kind of know, based on, I know there's a kind of general consensus within graffiti writers what constitutes a stylish piece and a piece that needs work, someone that's still developing. But none of that really means anything to a greater audience. And part of it is why I chose to start dealing with both the, the figurative and the non-representational work that I've done outside of my graffiti because I do want to reach people more in general and communicate with people. The process of finding my voice as a painter outside of graffiti was very slow. It was another probably six years of really kind of wrestling with what I really want to do, what mediums I want to work with, like what it is I'm trying to say, who am I, a lot of that stuff was sort of playing out separately. I find it really strange doing work that people like versus doing work that I spent 20 years doing that made a lot of people angry. That's still something I'm wrestling with. Every time someone approaches me, I'm half expecting to get told off. And it's so weird when I don't. I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> if I do a big wall, I generally choose somebody from the place that I'm painting. I very rarely bring an existing photograph from like a stock pile of images I've shot back home or elsewhere and paint them. It's, um, 
It's mostly something that people receive really well. The whole kind of selecting somebody from the community and painting them. I photograph the wall and I, I mock up what I'm going to do and I use a lot of the features of the wall as a kind of a basic grid because like I said it's like a printmaking process so um, I like things being slightly off register and it's not necessary for all the layers to line up so I have a little bit of freedom and I usually put a bold base colour down and that usually takes a couple of days if it's a large scale wall and then I start filling the general head shape with patterns that sort of correlate with, with the facial features. Um, there's certain things that are reoccurring. So I try to line them up with the mouth, the nose, the cheeks, the eyes, forehead, so forth. But they can be loose. And then I, I go through a process of mocking it up again on Photoshop, like once I have all the layers down. And I print that out and, and what I do is I'm looking at those patterns, they become a new grid. So I look at what facial details correlate with different information from the photograph because I'm not very close. I mean, if it's a seven story wall, I don't want to come up and down the lift every five seconds, so I have to trust that it, that process works. And 99% of the time, it's bang on, first go. It's, it's crazy, it works. When I paint my studio work, I paint the white layer first because I paint in, on the reverse side of plexiglass. So usually I paint the white layer down that makes the face and then it's just a reverse process of laying colour until I gradually get to the background, seal it all in with like four coats, flip it around, you've got to finish painting. Both my processes, indoor and out, are very physically demanding. I feel very tired after a day of painting outside. I can completely understand the artists that detach themselves from the physical art making process and pay someone else to do it. <laughs> it's actually quite smart. My paintings are based on the subject matter that I enjoy reading about, the issues that I see around me, and a lot of it is also sort of really based on the people around me and the cultures around me as a vehicle to kind of discuss these kind of bigger issues. The idea of tribes and tribal identity and how people that have very distinct kind of ancestral links also as they migrate further from the source um, look to redefine themselves constantly and, and kind of create self sort of determined tribal situations for themselves is something that fascinates me. So there's that whole kind of anthropological aspect to my work too. Um, and I guess a lot of that work came from being somebody who was somewhat detached from any real clear kind of ancestral links. Um, but is so immersed um, and amongst such vibrant cultures that I really love and appreciate. The graffiti world is a really interesting beast, you know. It's, um, it's, it's one of those things that you can invest a lot into it and it doesn't really equate to much in the end, except for kind of the gratification you got from doing it, from your peers and kind of recognition, but none of that equates into like financial like kind of stability or anything and, and it won't. I can't afford to buy a home, you know. I haven't even, even been able to afford to go to the dentist for like the last four years and I, believe me, I need to, right? you know. And there's times where I know if I just went and worked a regular job and, and made some regular money with the basic kind of perks of, that come with that, Maybe I'd be able to afford a few of those things, but would I be satisfied? Would I be happy? Because I also feel like working in that way is, it's similar to being farmed. You know, where there's just kind of someone at the top that's benefiting from everybody at the bottom kind of carrying their weight. And I know that wouldn't make me happy, but that's just a personal thing. You know, when you see art in the street, particularly, or just kind of creative things out in the real world, it, it lets you know that you live in a society that reflects the people that live in it in some way. Maybe that's important for kind of enjoyment and well-being, which in itself is a very, you know, simple and wonderful thing.